These are the ceiling hooks I'll be hanging the chain from. These will be screwed into the rafters, uh, the wood rafters in my garage, and the chain will hang from them. I purchased these at the local hardware store, and um, they were about two dollars. These are the hooks I will screw into the dowel. The chain will go through the eyes in the in the hooks. I purchased these also at the hardware store. They were also about two dollars. These are the S hooks that the chain will link around uh, after I loop them through the eye hooks. Uh, I had to purchase closed S hooks because the hardware store were out. This package of six only cost about a dollar fifty. I'll just use some pliers and bend them up, bend them out, and then bend them back in to close them back up. This is the chain I'll use to suspend the whole dowel and the paper from the ceiling. I purchased two three-foot sections. The chain was about 59 cents a foot, so six feet of 59 cents, not super expensive. Um, I went a little over duty or overboard on the, the chain. Uh, the working load of this chain I believe is 28 pounds. Uh, obviously this won't weigh that much, but uh, the next size down was the same price and uh, it was a little it would have been a little harder to work with, so I chose this chain, and I think the sections will work out just great. And here is the wood that I'll be using to suspend the whole thing with. I went with a 12 foot long, and I'll explain why 12 feet here in a moment. It's a 1 and 5 16 inch thick. Um, it's flexible, but not really flexible. It's sturdy, and uh, will hold the rolls of paper, or muslin, or uh, marine vinyl as I, as I use right now, because it was cheap. Um, and I will discuss more about why the distance here in just a moment. Here's where I get to explain the 12 foot length on the rod. I've got, uh, my rafters are 24 inches apart. Now that measurement comes from, if you look on the right side of the right rafter, that distance from there to the right side of the left rafter beam, you'll see that that distance is 24 inches. I don't know if that's a standard distance. I don't know if that's a code issue. I'm sure, I'm sure there's a code about it but uh, my house was built in the mid uh, 60s and I live in the Pacific Northwest. Now, the standard maximum size of a, a seamless white backdrop is gonna be 107 inches. Now, if you take 12 inches and multiply it by 10 feet, which is the next smallest size I could go, I can either go 12 feet or 10 feet. The 10 feet, that gives me 120 inches. I'm not 100% sold on that distance for the rod. It seems like that I wouldn't have very much room on the sides. Yeah, I guess that's technically 13 inches, but with uh, paper rolls and whatnot, it just might not be long enough. So I went with the 12 feet. The worst thing that happens here is that I get to cut cut it down to 10 feet and uh, re-screw in the screws and mess around a little bit. So let's move on. Now here's a tip that I learned from somebody much smarter about working with hand tools and power tools and drills and whatnot. I, uh, when drilling into wood, it's very easy to split the wood if you're uh, using something like a like one of these eye hooks or a screw of any kind, especially if you're near the corner or the edge of a piece of wood. So the best thing to do is to take a drill and uh, drill a pilot hole first. Now, uh, fortunately, these hooks are really cool and on the back of them have uh, provided up in the top right corner there the uh, size drill bit. Fortunately, I've got the 564 and 564th of an inch drill bit and I put that in my drill. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, climb up and drill out a uh, couple of holes for the hooks that I'm going to be using um, on one of the beams. So that's the chain hanging on the hooks. I spaced the hooks 12 inches apart near the top of the beam. I don't want it to drape too far down because then we lose some of the height from my garage. From the bottom of the rafters to the cement floor is only about eight feet, one inch. And uh, we need all the headroom we can get, especially for uh, group shots or for full length portraits and whatnot. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and take care of the other side and then we're gonna start trying to mount the beam. And here folks is why you always measure twice, cut once. When I went to hang the rod up, just through looping it around the one end of the chain already hung up and seeing if it reached the other rafter, it didn't reach. Now, I base my math on just measuring the distance between one rafter to the other and just assume that everyone was the same distance because they look the same. Obviously, that's not the case. So, what I have to do is just make a, a length of 124 inches. That still gives us plenty of clearance on each side, taking into consideration a 107 inch 
inches wide of the seamless white background. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, just move my raft, uh, hooks up one rafter and play around. Alright, it's time to hang the chain. I've got the two hooks screwed in over here. And I approximated, I grabbed the rod and thread through that end, and I'm gonna, I kind of hung it over here just to see, make sure it's kind of straight. You know, this isn't exactly perfect, and uh, it's not gonna be exactly parallel, I don't think. But we'll, uh, we'll do the best we can. All right, so it's maybe a little tighter than it should be, so let's give it a couple more lengths on the hook. Now I want it to be about the same, you know. Alright, it's probably about the same, so I'm going to grab the rod and let's see what happens. Alright, got one end in, look, loop through that side of the chain. Alright, we've got it hanging. It's approximately straight, you know, it, it's not too crooked. There is some give in it, but your paper's probably going to be on a tube of some kind, or or if you backdrop, it doesn't, This uh, if you're using a muslin, it's really not that heavy, and this is certainly strong enough to hold it. And the paper, it's going to, it's a distributed load, so even, it's not like it's going to be in the middle and really bowing too much. It's not a perfect solution, and you can go spend $150 on a mobile uh, collapsible rod and everything like that, and you're still going to get some flex. So. For essentially $25 of materials I've got to mount this, it's certainly cheaper than going and buying something. I think we're going to be really surprised with the results. Here's just a quick shot to see how it's hanging. Um, it's looking really, really good. I'm contemplating not even using the eye hooks. The eye hooks will complicate things slightly by sliding the, uh, when trying to add an additional paper or something like that. Um, I don't have any uh, seamless white paper right now. It's, uh, I'm going to probably be ordering that from B&H or Adorama here very shortly. The, I don't really see a need to put the eye hooks in it because when you're trying to put like a roll of paper on it, you're going to have to undo one of the eye hooks and then put the eye hook back in. Um, but if you're not really doing that that often, it's probably not going to be that big of a deal. Um, I mean, you're talking at like, you can get it like, what, 15 to 50 yards in, in length. So you've, you're not going to have to put it on that much. I'm kind of worried about uh, longevity if you do use eye hooks screwing it out screwing it back in you're definitely going to put some uh, durability on that hole that you've drilled but uh, this is looking really good so I'm going to go ahead and grab my marine vinyl I've got on a rod and let's see how it looks up here all right as you can see I've got my marine vinyl hanging from the rod up there it's looking really nice I am surprised at how easy it was to get on there though rocking it back and forth it made me kind of waver on the eye hook thing. I might go the eye hooks, I might not. Time will probably tell on this. I'm going to go ahead and zoom out so you can see just how little paper that is. Actually, not paper, marine vinyl. But really, I've got tons of extra space to work with. That marine vinyl was an attempt that you might have seen my other video uh, hanging from some PVC pipe. That PVC pipe did not work great at all. Probably going to put a video response up to that video directing people over here. It's certainly larger, and you could go smaller. I mean, obviously, you could you know just go six feet or something like that wide. You don't have to go the full length for the uh, full size, full seamless. I'm going to go ahead and take the marine vinyl, bring it down. Let's see what it looks like when it's extended. Wow, I think that looks perfect. It's not very long, but the material was never intended for this being suspended eight feet from the ceiling. This is perfect for a single portrait, maybe a, a double portrait uh, close together, a uh, husband and wife or uh, maybe a boyfriend, girlfriend, or even an engagement shop of some kind. I've got additional material that I'm going to hang up and show you here in a moment, but I just wanted to show you what it looks like. Um, I'll probably splice in a photo here showing just a photo taken with this setup just so you can see how effective it is. But this is just fantastic. I'm excited. Here I am standing in front of the backdrop. It's a hand-dyed muslin hanging from the rod. It's working out fantastic. My camera is about five feet from my face, and the backdrop is about four feet behind me. You can see the nice blur. I'm at f4 at 70 millimeters. And with the camera five feet away, I've got quite a bit of subject isolation. I can work that distance both behind me and from the camera to the subject quite a bit, depending on the circumstance, what the kind of what I'm trying to achieve and how many people I've got in the shot. Let's take a look at what the backdrop looks like hanging from the rod. 
Here you can see a full size shot of what's going on. I've got the muslin hanging from the rod using a couple clamps to secure it. The muslin isn't that long and I was never intending it to hang it 8 feet from the ceiling, just like the marine vinyl. It's working out great and I couldn't be more pleased. Alright, that wraps up for this project today. I really hope you enjoyed watching it because I enjoyed making it for you. If you have any questions or comments, leave them below and I'll be sure to get back to you. As a side note, I decided not to use the I hooks or the S hooks because I don't think I need to secure it any better than it is. It's just me using this and if I was maybe running a home studio or using it a lot or had people using the space and shared with me, I would put them up there for security's sake. But I don't think I need them for now. I've got them in the wings and it's only about $4 lost total. So the total comes to about $20 for the materials that you saw hung up from here. If you have any questions, let me know and I'll get back to you. Thanks for watching and have a great day. Thank you.